University of Technology. The main reason I'm doing my PhD at Swinburne is because of my supervisor, Tim. The relationship between a supervisor and a student is, is complicated and it changes with time. Predominantly, you're an advisor. I knew I wanted to get into uni and I needed a way in, so I started off at TAFE and I spent a few years there. Then I transferred to my Bachelor of Computer Science Software Engineering and from there went to Masters and then now PhD. Tim was a lecturer for Intelligent Systems, which I did in my final year of my undergrad. And during that, I found out he was a professor of artificial intelligence. Halfway through Intelligent Systems, there was a research project, but he kind of disguised it, so it was just kind of a normal project. Like every semester he does it, whoever's got the best assignment, he'll see if there's potential there to do a paper, and he picks them up and gives them a research scholarship for the summer. The summer scholarship led into him looking for me to do a PhD and me looking for someone to be my supervisor. So in the end, I wasn't sure who was trying to convince who to come back. The single most important characteristic of a student is motivation, and David certainly wasn't sure about that. My field of research is collective intelligence, which is a sub-branch of artificial intelligence. The work I'm doing is swarm robotics controlling groups of unmanned aerial vehicles to do aerial surveillance for applications like bushfire spotting or maybe military applications. So the idea behind swarm intelligence is there's no centralised control. Most of the algorithms are nature-inspired, like ants finding food or birds flocking. With the birds flocking, they follow kind of three simple rules. Head in the same direction as your peers, travel in the same speed, stay close to the centre, don't get too close. And out of that, you get complex emergent behaviours. Most of my time spent at my computer running simulations. I set up a batch file and then it'll run like a couple of weeks worth of simulations. But it takes a lot of computing power, so it takes a while to run. And then after the end, I spend my time just going through data files and collating it into graphs. That's kind of where the real work starts, kind of figuring out why the graphs are the shapes they are. And the tricky part's figuring out not how to replicate it, because that's easy, but why exactly it kind of happened the way it did. Assuming everything goes to plan and nothing crashes, these uh, batch files can run for up to a couple of weeks just generating data. But if there's anything too sticky and I can't kind of get it, that's when I take it up to Tim. He might pipe up with a few good ideas, then we start talking and then we'll walk away. Then a few hours later, something will click and I'll just you know, run back up and go, hey Tim, I figured it out. And he'll be like, yeah. The first thing is the student must feel comfortable talking to you and you must feel comfortable talking to the student. And once you've got a good communication, then you slowly start to introduce the student to other people. The paper we did for the summer scholarship, it ended up getting published and then Tim went and presented it in Atlanta, Georgia. The next paper I wrote, that's getting presented in ACAL, uh, the Australian Conference for Artificial Life. I think it's at Melbourne Uni, end of the year. And then we've got another paper coming up, which will probably be presented in maybe Spain or Atlanta again, a different conference. The crucial part of a PhD is to introduce the student into the advisor's network of contacts so that they feel quite comfortable first meeting people locally, then people from overseas, people perhaps whose names they've read on papers or who have written books and feel quite comfortable walking up and talking to them as they would anybody else. Because each research field is sort of really close-knit, so there's only like a handful of people in each field and once you know them, you've got contact points where you can go to for jobs in the future or questions about your research or they might have found out some interesting stuff that they want to share with you. You know, once I'm done here, you know, if I need a job, you know, maybe I'll be ringing them up and seeing what they've got. Swinburne University of Technology.